All right, I know we've got a few people still joining, but I think we can go ahead and uh, get started for today. So uh, thank you everyone for joining us for our live demo series. Uh, today we're going to have kind of a unique demo. Uh, it's going to be a little different than normal. We're going to have uh, Provident Credit Union is going to be joining us and they're going to be doing a customer case study and talking a little bit about how they've been able to leverage data theorem at, at the credit union. Um, so before we get started with that, I just want to share a little bit about data theorem with everyone. Um, so the company was founded in 2013 and we're based out of Silicon Valley, uh, headquartered out of Palo Alto, California, uh, with regional offices in New York and Paris. Um, also, one of the things I, I wanted to highlight is uh, all of our leadership team has over 15 and in some cases over 20 years in the cybersecurity space. So it's really a core part of our DNA uh, and who we are as a company. And that has led us to the privilege to work with a number of amazing uh, different organizations for both their application security, API, uh, web app and cloud security over the last few years. So it's been, it's been a great privilege to be a part of all these organizations, application security teams and program. Um, now a little bit more just to kind of what we do. So data theorem really is focused on being not just any one siloed application security vendor, but really being a full application stack uh, security company. And so uh, we touched on a number of different areas from APIs to mobile and web as well as cloud. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of these different things today um, during today's discussion, but if you're interested in understanding uh, or seeing some of the other parts of our portfolio, um, we, we, we host this uh, series every week. Um, we'll be, we always shift, shift the topic around or you can always request a uh, custom demo and be happy to, to, uh, to walk you through any part of our portfolio at that time as well. So with that, um, I want to just share a little bit about Provident Credit Union and I'll go ahead and introduce John here. But, uh, so Provident Credit Union is, uh, they're headquartered out of San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, they serve over 120,000 members uh, at over uh, 1,200 employer groups across California. And uh, one of the things that um, I really like that they, that they share about themselves is they've earned their reputation for absolute safety and soundness. And so we've got uh, John Haggerty, who's the Vice President of Marketing and Digital Experience from Provident Credit Union joining us. Um, so hi, John, thank you for, for joining us and taking some time. Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, you're welcome, Richard. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. So uh, I figured you could maybe start off by telling us a little bit about your roles and responsibilities over at uh, Provident. Sure. Yeah, well, as you mentioned, uh, Provident, we are um, founded and based in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, we've been around for uh, just over 70 years. Um, we originally were founded by the California Teachers Association uh, and has since grown to include other employer groups, but as well as uh, members of the general uh, community. Um, I am the, uh, the Vice President of Marketing and Digital Experience. Um, so that uh, in covers or uh, it covers everything from our external site to our online banking, mobile apps, uh, and also all the vendors that are involved with all of that, all of that rolls up to me as well. Perfect. So you, um, so yeah. So, given that you handle the digital experience and specifically the uh, your digital banking portfolio, um, what 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 challenges does Provident Credit Union face um, when it comes to uh, just the, it's the same way a lot of financial institutions do when it comes to you know personal identifiable information or more specifically in your case uh, personal financial information that you carry for your clients that use uh, across these digital platforms. Yeah, um, there's a number of challenges there, but I think the thing that's most important for us is making sure that everyone on our developer group, everyone at Provident, and as well as our vendors, you know, takes that responsibility as seriously as you can. You know, we are handling a very sensitive personal information, um, you know, social security number, address, email address, phone number, transaction history, loans, credit reports. And you know that is incredibly important to take that seriously, but also making sure that everyone on your group and your vendor shares that same level of responsibility. You know, we are the fiduciary of these folks' accounts, and it's important to me, but it's important to you know our entire organization that you know the data protection is the single most important thing that we are responsible for. Um, so with that, we really do take a a second thought a second, take additional time to think, is this information appropriate uh, to be shared in the app? 
Uh, where is that information being stored? How is it being accessed? Who has access to it? Um, and so we really do take a second thought uh, to think, should we share this account number on the screen? Should this account number be shared in full? Should it be hashed? Should it be, should we share the entire number? It, all those kinds of considerations, we really do take as much time and thought to think, is it appropriate? And if we, if we do think it's appropriate, how are we going to do to share that? Right. No, and it, and it and it some and it extends beyond just your own, you know, uh, you know, governance that you've implemented, right? So um, there's, you know, how do organizations such as like the National Credit Union Association or regulatory bodies such as CCAPA uh, play a role in how you kind of approach this as well? Yeah. Well, um, most financial institutions, credit unions for sure, and banks, and and perhaps insurance uh, companies as well. You know, they have their government auditors. So NCUA is our federal auditor. And we also have a state auditor and uh, we have a third auditor, which are, is our private uh, third party. And with the, the, the state and the federal auditors, they have certain things that they're always looking for. Um, and uh, from time to time, when they visit us on a 12 or 18 month basis, they may have points of emphasis that they uh, are now looking at. And what we want to be able to, to do is be as prepared in advance for those exams as possible. So that we're not caught off guard with uh, their points of emphasis, or if they're coming in asking for documentation, or if they're coming in asking, do we have this type of uh, control in place? We don't want to be rushing at the last minute to gather that information or uh, rush at the last minute to implement something. We want to be as ahead of the game as possible. Now, I will say that with the, the government auditors, uh, they don't get into some of the fine details as our own independent uh, auditor. But even with the independent private auditor, we want to be as ahead of the game as possible and be prepared for, for really what, whatever kinds of questions they're going to ask us in advance. And so, and so traditionally, has that, you know, how have you handled that process prior to leveraging something like data theorem? Uh, what did that look like for you uh, in getting ready for those types of things in those audits? Yeah, well, I mean, things are, are always changing and with the, the government auditors, um, they have their, their checklists and a lot of the questions they ask are, are very, um, they don't change uh, often. They do, uh, but they don't change often from exam to exam. Um, but we, and so we, we feel generally comfortable that we're able to answer most of their questions. Um, but as I mentioned, they don't get into the weeds as much as our, our internal or our, our, our private independent auditor and the, the data theorem platform has really helped us to anticipate some of the things that they might be looking at in the future and be able to have a response or a control for that before their exam comes through. So would you say you've seen the overall audit process be, you've been able to streamline that pretty substantially from where you were you know prior to leveraging a solution like data theorem? Uh, no question because the the, the data theorem platform allows us to provide government auditors or you know, third party private ones. It allows us to show them this is exactly how we're protecting our members, you know, personal, personally identifiable information. This is the platform that we're using. These were the, the issues that were identified. This is how we, we close them. Uh, this is the time it took for us to do that. So what it really helps us to do is to show we're, we're taking it seriously and really kind of, you know, head off a lot of those questions in advance um, because we, we have the tool in place. Awesome. And so um, you, you kind of mentioned something uh, there. You, you mentioned kind of talking about being able to show effectively that you have a security program in place addressing all these types of concerns. Um, now, like, like many regional and uh, banks as well as credit unions, your app de is developed uh, in part by a third party vendor, or at least a portion of your apps are. Um, so prior to data theorem, what was your cybersecurity approach to ensure that the digital banking apps uh, did to ensure your digital banking app security? Yeah, well, I th you know, a lot of that we, we left up to the third party uh, vendor and, you know, they don't um, share uh, you know, in too great of a detail you know, their, their code with us. So it was, we had to trust that they were taking it as seriously as they were telling us. And it was very difficult for us to actually verify that. Um, 
we don't have a full staff of uh, security professionals here. Um, so we, we just needed to trust that uh, what they were telling us was in fact what was happening. Um, however, with, the, with data theorem, we're now able to verify that. And we're able to point out some things that you know may have uh, may rise to the level of you know a, a low concern or a high concern, and really put the pressure and give us leverage on that pressure to that third party to ask them, hey, why is this setting the way it is? Uh, why is this uh, security issue not controlled already? And prior to this, we didn't have any of that visibility, and now we do. And so, would you say that, um, so, so uh, you know, obviously this organization, they, they work with a lot of financial institutions and, and there's a, a number of organizations like that. Um, did you feel that they, you just didn't have visibility into the, into the, um, what they had in place to ensure app security? Or was it, is, is it, was it, is it uh, something that now having data theorem, you've now been able to kind of validate that that is in place? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a mix of, of both. I mean, we would ask for, um, you know, their security documentation, you know, what issues that they, they had, uh, how do they go about um, fixing those issues? Um, and, and so they would share a bit of that with us. But again, you have to trust, uh, you have to have the trust in your third party vendor that they're sharing with you all the information. Well, now we don't really need to trust them. Uh, we can verify that fact through the data theorem platform. And so, how, how have you seen that the data theorem has helped you change the way you worked with that third party developer in this case? Well, yeah, it gives us that leverage. Uh, it gives us that, that insight and that transparency that, you know, wasn't um, completely there before. Um, so, if there was a, let's just uh, hypothetically, if there was a, a security hole in the app somewhere, uh, we wouldn't have known about it. We would have had to have reacted to it. Um, and now we can be a lot more proactive and, you know, uh, head off any issues in advance before they become, you know, real reputational risks for us. Perfect. Um, and so, as part of that, right, you know, you know, you do outsource some of that, but some of it also is developed in-house. Um, and so, how has Data Theorem helped your in-house development team, uh, you know, get ahead of some of these risks or uh, vulnerabilities? Yeah, so our, our third party, they do some development, but we also have in-house uh, developers too. Uh, and we want to make sure that, you know, the, the modules or uh, as we refer to them or the code that they're deploying to the app uh, is secure. And it's not opening up any issues um, when the, the app is released to the stores. Um, so when they are developing something new for our app, um, we'll work with Data Theorem to you know, run that through their process and identify any issues uh, before the app gets released. And, and uh, at least from my perspective that gives me a lot of uh, it gives me a great sense of relief that you know we are following the appropriate steps we are following you know best practices um, and as we said at the beginning you know we take the safety and soundness seriously and this tool allows us to do that Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. So, um, kind of going on to that. So, I actually went and pulled just kind of, you know, some 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 results and things that we've been able to help you guys with over the last few uh, 90 days. And so, um, one of the things we've been able to do is really integrate both into, you know, your development, both with your third-party vendor and those applications as well as your own. Um, to make sure we're, we're we're taking a complete security perspective and and really help you guys over you know get get ahead of those security issues. I think 20 things here that we've seen, uh, and then as well going back to those compliance issues, it makes sure you're avoiding things that you know that could potentially put uh, your members' um, data privacy at risk and so forth. Um, so kind of given all that, what is uh, what's next for Provident Credit Union and your digital banking apps? Well, you know a lot. Um... You know, later on this year, we're going to be uh, updating the mobile base code. Um, that's going to give us some, you know, new features and benefits for our members. Um, and this will be our, when we get it uh, from our vendor, uh, we'll run it through uh, the data theorem platform and uh, it'll just, it's going to help us to identify, okay, did they close some of the other issues that we pointed out to them before that we couldn't control on our own? Uh, did it introduce some, some new issues? Um, and like I said, this is going to help us be more proactive uh, rather than reactive. Um, I, I, 
One of the things that makes me really nervous is when we release an app from a from our vendor, uh, did we control for everything? Um, and prior to using Data Theorem, and like I said, that was a hope, but now we have the ability to, to verify that in advance uh, while we're going through the, the beta testing and working out all the, bu all the bugs and issues. So it gives me a great sense of relief. Do you see your guys um, continue to shift further left in integrating more uh, security tools and things like that into the development for both your in-house as well as your, your third-party developers as you expand? Yeah, I mean, it's, gonna, it's a learning experience for, for both of us. Uh, it's a learning experience, I think, for our, our third party when they've got a client that has a tool like this that is kind of really holding their feet to the fire. Um, and so, you know, the third party has to learn what this new process is. Um, they, you know, th there is more pressure on their developers too, which is good. Um, you know, if, they're, if we're pointing out some security holes that none of their other clients are doing, you know, one, they're going to fix it for us, um, but two, hopefully they also fix that for their other, uh, you know, other clients. Uh, because, you know, if let's say our third party vendor has, you know, let's say, a hundred clients and one of them has a problem uh, and then it comes to be known that we also use that same 30 third party vendor. There's some, you know, implied uh, reputational risk, even though we had blocked that problem on our own app, um, there's no doubt that our some of our members, especially being in the Bay Area, they will find out about that. And if we can protect, you know, the whole ecosystem, if you will, uh, we're going to be better off for that. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great point. Um, so, um, so, yeah, so I think, you know, at this point, that's kind of the, uh, the questions I had. Um, so what I wanted to do here is uh, open it up to kind of our, our, our audience to see if there's any other folks uh, who have joined us today who had uh, a question for myself uh, regarding data theorem or a question for, for John and how uh, Provident Credit Union handles their application security. Um, so let me give it, let me just go ahead and check. If you if you got, do have a question, um, feel free to drop it in the WebEx chat. I meant to say that in the beginning, but uh, if there's, if there's a question, feel free to drop it there and we'll go ahead and uh, read that uh, and get that answered for you here. So I'll give everybody a minute or two uh, to, to throw any questions they may have in there. Okay, so I've got one question here. So, 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 uh, so, John, this question would uh, would be for you. So, how big is the AppSec staff at Provident, and is there a need to increase that with Data Theorem? Um, I, I think it. I'll ask, I'll answer that in general. I think it depends on um, if the issue that's been identified by Data Theorem is that something that we have visibility into the code that we can fix on our own. Um, or are some of the issues that uh, were identified, are those more on the, on the third party? So I think de depending on, say, your own circumstance, um, if you've got internal developers and uh, the data theorem tool has pointed out a lot of things that you can fix, then I would say the answer to that would be yes. Um, but if, it, if not, if you rely on your third party to fix that, well, then, then of course there will be no need for you to hire additional Okay. And then uh, let me see. Uh, no other questions at the moment. And one of the other things I would point out, though, is if you do have uh, internal uh, data sec uh, security developers, uh, that can be helpful to uh, look through the issues that have been identified in the data theorem platform and have you know a staff uh, employed for you that understands you know how serious this issue is. Um, you know, how you may be controlling for that in a different way. And so if you've got somebody on staff um, who can kind of look at those issues and provide guidance, I think that'd be very, very valuable. Um, but I, I do believe that, and, and I'm pretty sure the answer to this is correct, that Data Theorem also provides a, a level of support uh, for the issues that are identified. So if you don't have the, the staff on site, I believe that Data Theorem has some support that can answer some of those questions for you. Richard, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's correct. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, so one of the things, um, you know, that we that's really important to us is not just helping our customers uh, identify those issues and then, like, in your case, be able to take those back to their third-party developer uh, and highlight that and say, hey, here's what we need to get closed out. But what's really important to us is to be able to provide a solution to those issues as well. So anytime we have a finding, whether it be the most severe, you know, critical thing in the world or even something very minor, uh, it's really important to data theorem that we provide a, uh, a one, a detailed explanation of why that's an issue, but also how you can remediate that and get that fixed with, and even to the level of providing you with an example of uh, how to properly write that code. So even if you have your own developers in-house or even those outsourced developers, that they can easily grab that uh, and not spend a whole lot of time doing their own research to understand how to fix it, but can use that as a basis to jump right into uh, getting that closed out. Um, so I do have one other question here that popped up. Uh, what types of regulations do you leverage uh, the data theorem reports for? Or, or what kind of auditors accept the output of, of, of those reports that you work with? Yeah, well, as I mentioned, we, um, we are audited by the, the NCUA. We're audited by the uh, California auditors. Um, and it's been, it's been my experience. Uh, you know, every, so with the NCUA, there's different regions. Every region has different teams of auditors. And so those teams may accept different documentation than, than others may not. Um, but it's been my experience through the exams that we've been through since we've been with Data Theorem that they've, uh, they've accepted the documentation from Data Theorem that we provided. And, and, so, and so typically you, you would just send over um, those reports and, and has that help to streamline that process for you overall? Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, it, it helps to avoid, um, you know, you know, questions that, let me, let me think here for a second. If they're asking how we are controlling our app, what is our process? Um, what are the tools that we're using? We can show them all of this. And I think it helps prevent further questions because it gives the auditors, um, you know, some sense of, of relief or perhaps just an answer to their question that, you know, Provident is, is doing everything that they can to protect their clients' information. Got it. Um, let me just see if there's any other questions that have come in. Um, I think that's all the questions we've received so far. Um, so I know we're kind of getting close to our time. So um, kind of with that, if anybody else has any other questions, um, what I can, what they can do is you can uh, feel free to email us at knowledge at datatherum.com. Um, we'll be happy to, to get those answered. Um, you know, we can always, uh, we always reach out to John and, and, and pull him in if we need to as well for those. Um, or if you're interested in getting a demo of, of, of the demo, of data theorem platform, you can go to www.datatherum.com slash demo. And we'd be happy to get that set up and kind of show you uh, all about how we can do a lot of the things we've helped uh, Provident Credit Union with their application security as well. So uh, with that, I wanted to first and foremost, thank you, John, for taking the time out of your schedule to join us today and talk a little bit about uh, Provident and how you approach your application security with Data Theorem. And I wanna thank everybody else for joining us uh, during this live demo series and, and tuning in. And uh, I think believe next week we're gonna be talking about API security. So we'd love to have you join us for that. So thank you again, everyone.